Do you know that only 10% of you have subscribed? So if you're part of the 90 that isn't, please consider subscribing today. Hey ho, Sally BC here, and today I'm doing a video on my Aligned Continuity Collection. Now technically this isn't my whole collection, because I've got all the Cyberverse stuff that I've done a separate video on. But these are sort of the regular sized figures, although they are all are technically deluxes, so I could just say it's my deluxe collection, but I don't have any larger ones, so I'm just going to just gonna call this my collection. So here they all are in their alt modes. You've got War for Cybertron, the video game Optimus Prime, Prime Wheeljack, unfortunately I'm missing his swords, Prime RC, uh, this is not the first edition version, Prime Beast Hunters, I guess the black Bumblebee, and Robertson Disguise, Scorpnog. So let's have a look at their vehicle modes first. Here is Optimus Prime. He's this Cybertronian vehicle mode, so this would be his vehicle mode before he gets to Earth. As you can see, unfortunately, the spring on the gun is broken, so it's all floppy. But you can still fold it up like this, and it, it works like that. It doesn't It's not all floppy now. And you can put it into car mode like that, and it works quite well. And it can roll, if I move off the other way, it can roll quite nicely. And here it is, next to Earthrise Optimus. See, it actually looks roughly the same sort of size, which is quite nice. Uh, although he's a lot bigger in robot mode, I do... You know, I, I think they work quite well together. Uh, now, in collection-wise, I actually consider this Orion Pax, rather than Optimus Prime. Um, if you aren't aware, Orion Pax is what Optimus Prime was before he was Optimus Prime. So I'll put him off to the side, and here is Wheeljack. This sort of really sleek car mode. Uh, if I had the swords, they could plug under here and point out forwards. I believe they could also peg into the back here. They could also go into these tabs here and just sit underneath the car mode. Yeah, it's really nice. Uh, I like the translucent window. Uh, it's it's nice and dimmed down, and there's also some black plastic behind there, so you can't really see lots of robot parts, which is nice. This vehicle mode can also this vehicle mode can also roll quite nicely. I really do like the the red and the green. Although this figure has very little green on it, it still feels a lot like Wheeljack, which is nice. Of course, here it is next to Optimus Prime. You can see the sort of size difference there. This guy's definitely Deluxe, this guy's definitely a Voyager. Next up is RC. Here is RC. She's got this huge cannon with this blade underneath. I have the blade this way because if it's this way it kind of collides with the wheel a little bit. But I'll just uh, take that off. You can take that blade off and just plug it into those holes on either side of the wheel. She's also got this kickstand that you can fold away. But then, you know, she doesn't really stand up. It's it's obviously a very large motorbike, especially compared next to a truck like this. But, you know, it's alright. I always think that Prime RC, the, the toys are always way too big. So this one's too big, and the small little Cyberverse one is too big. I think just being a little bit smaller would make her much better scaled, not only in vehicle mode, but also in robot mode. Because she's usually taller than Bumblebee in robot mode, when in the show she's actually like up to like his chest height. See, she's got like the little bits where you put the feet and the, the handlebars. There's also some uh, sort of heads-up display detailing, I guess. Yeah, it's alright. And uh, here is the Beast Hunter's Black Bumblebee. I don't know what the actual name of this figure is. I know it was in the Beast Hunters line, but I don't know the the name for like all the black bits. Um, so yeah, it, it's all weaponized up with these spikes and stuff. This can open up, and you can plug in these missiles. So he comes with six of these, and you can take them off. Oh, you gotta really slide them out of there. It's a bit of a pain to do so. But these will just slide in there. I'll just take this off. So they, they slide in like that. And then there's this little button at the back here that you can 
if it will work properly you can press it and they'll shoot out sort of but yeah you can take this off you can also take off these guns at the front and with enough force you can take these off it's a bit difficult the first time you do it but after that it gets easier so now you just got this car with all these spikes i'd like to get another bumblebee this is currently my only bumblebee um, I'd like to get either the first edition Prime Bumblebee or the Netflix Bumblebee. One or the other. I don't really know. I think either of them would fit in my collection. This guy's currently a placeholder. But, uh, whatever. Uh, of course, here he is with Optimus. Probably a bit big. But I, I, th I think it works fine. And finally, here's Scorponok. It's, uh, it's a scorpion. You can see you can plug the sword at the end of the tail to give it sort of like a longer, sort of sharper pincer, but I think it does look better without it. Of course, it's got these legs. They're not really movable. that You can kind of move them up and down, but all together. The tail's on a ball joint, so it can go up and down and turn around. There's also a hinge here and a hinge here. Then at the arms, they're on ball joints that apparently pop off. And then there's mushroom pegs right below them, but it doesn't, they don't really matter because, like, you can just turn it at the ball joint anyway. Uh, unless, I guess, you wanted to move them down and then out like that. But again, they pop off really easily. The head is on a hinge, so it can move up and down, and the jaw is also on a hinge, so it can open and close. Just like that. So, yeah, quite nice. And here it is next to Optimus. Very, very large scorpion or a very, very small truck. So let's get on to the transformation. I guess I'll start with this guy since he's in my hands. So what you're going to want to do is fold up the legs. Come down to the bottom. You want to grab these sections and they'll move down and around like this. Same on this side. Then you want to move these out. Twist these around like this. Same on this side down, twist around, then you're going to want to grab this piece and detach it like this, fold the robot head forward, take the scorpion head, fold it in like this, and this entire back section will hinge down on a double hinge, like that, then you want to take the legs, the, these bits fold back, and you want to flip out the feet, like chicken legs. Then you want to come to the scorpion pincers, you want to open these up, like this, fold this piece back, and I guess technically this could be considered parts forming, but it it, it doesn't, it's not loose, it, it's, it still stays there, but uh, there's a little tab right there that goes into that hole there, goes in just like that, move the arm down, like this, and then close those up like that, same on this side. Open up the pincer, this, twist it around, plug it, plug it into place, move that down, and then just move the arm around like that. That's Scorponok in his robot mode. Oh, right, yeah, you want to fold the tail up onto his back. So he's got some decent posability. His arms can move forward, especially if you move this up out of the way, and they can move back. They can also move out a bit, but it can unpeg this. There is, of course, a mushroom peg there, so the arm can move out. Then there's a bend at the elbow. There's a ball joint at the head, so it can move all around. Up, down. Not much side to side. No waist, swiv no waist swivel. Our legs can move forward and back. And there's, move, they can twist like that. There's not really a proper knee bend because of just the way the knees work. But you can sort of move that and that, you can give him super long legs and then the, I guess you can put him in a tiptoe stance if you want to and the tail still has all the same posability as it did before the sword of course you can put that in his hand like that get him into some sort of fighting poses or you can just put it back up there just like that. There he is next to Optimus. You can see Optimus is quite a lot taller than he is. You know, they look 
fine together. It's it's whatever. You know, th th there's not really much I can say. You know, he he's deluxe size. I don't have a I don't really have a proper current deluxe to compare him to. So I'll just put him off to the side. And move on to Bumblebee. So, the transformation for this guy, I'm going to take these pieces, move them down. Like this. Then just open up the doors. Like that. I'm going to disconnect this back piece from the top. Move this entire section down like this. This roof moves down and then down even further. I'm going to grab the front and sort of split it open like this, if it will. There we go, like that. And tire piece flips back. That auto transforms the head, moves that out. And you want to come to the bottom, detach them like this, and then move the feet out like that. I apologize if this guy's a bit difficult to see because of the dark background. There's Bumblebee in robot mode. Now you can see that this guy's a bit hollow at the back here. You can sort of lift that up like this, but that makes him like really skinny. And I kind of just prefer having it down like that. Now, of course, you can arm him up with all of his weapons. You can take this piece. Tap it on his back, close those down if you want to. Then these, of course, they can go into the slots on the windows or the, the doors, I guess, or wings, whatever you want to call them. Uh, and then take the this gun piece, this splits in half. And then you can put each of these onto his forearms, like this. Seems like the camera is focusing on Scorpionock instead of Bumblebee. Come on, there we go. I like the whole black and gold colour scheme with bits of blue. And the head sculpt is also quite nice. But again, I'd, I'd prefer to have a, a regular Bumblebee rather than one of these sort of super powered up spiky versions. Uh, here he is next to Optimus. I kind of like this, this scale. I, I do like Bumblebee being very short, like a lot shorter than Optimus and even shorter than some Deluxes. I think it works well for Bumblebee. And I think this scale works. He doesn't want to stand up though, for some reason. He usually does. Why he isn't today? I don't know. There we go. Uh, next up is RC. So to transform her, what you want to do is detach these side pieces like this. They go all the way to the front. Like this. Then you want to take the wheel out, twist it like that, and it will fold up onto the front there. Then you want to, of course, fold in there that. Then move these out like this. Unpeg the arms. Fold out the fists and move them down. Same on this side. Move out. Then you want to take the entire legs and they will fold down. There's a tab there that will go in a little hole there and that will auto transform the head up like this. I'm going to come down here, I'm going to detach the wheel, split it in half like this Then these entire sections will move forward and then these will twist back like this And then just take this entire piece and move it onto the back, like that. There's RC in robot mode. You can take her weapons, split them in half. There's this peg and then there's this peg. So you can plug it in her hand like this, or you can plug it onto her arm. But if you watch the show, you know her hand sort of transforms into it. So you kind of want to put it in like that. So it's this big cannon like this. And then that will just go onto her arm like it did in the show. Now for articulation, her head is on a ball joint. Move up and down, side to side, blah, blah, blah. Arms are on ball joints and on hinges. So they can sort of move up and down. 
ball joint at the elbow, which is a bit tight, so you can easily pop off the arm. And the wrist is also on a ball joint, so it can move in and out and it can twist around. There's no waist swivel due to transformation, but the legs can move forward and back. There's a thigh swivel and a bend at the knee. And she's also got some light piping, which I can't really show off because I don't have a torch. But as you can see, there's all this translucent plastic and that comes all the way through to her eyes. I did realise that I forgot to do his articulation, so he's got a ball joint at the head. The arms can move forward and back. They can move out a bit, but if you move this up, they can move up a little further. Uh, elbow swivel and bend at the elbow. No waist swivel again. Legs can move forward and back. If you move the backpack out of the way, they can move further back. Swivel at the thigh. Bend at the knee. And there's a little bit, a, a little bit, a tiny bit of ankle piv ankle movement here but that doesn't really look good and then there's a little bit hit like here but that also doesn't really look good yep there's bumblebee oh, well, oh whatever i don't care and of course rc next to optimus she's quite small not as small as she was in the show especially if we compare her next to bumblebee as you can see she's a little bit taller than Bumblebee, when really she should only come up to like his chest there. So it's like that would be a bit of a better scaling. And then like Bumblebee compared compared to Optimus would be like rather than that would probably more likely be like that maybe. So yeah, there's some rumors of some new Prime figures coming out in the next year. So maybe we'll get some nicely scaled ones. Maybe we'll get a new Bumblebee. There's no current rumours of a Bumblebee. There's rumours of, a, I think, an Optimus, a Bulkhead, an RC, and a Knockout. Oh, whatever. I cannot be bothered. Here's Wheeljack. So to transform Wheeljack, you split the um, window down the middle and move the side bits out. Then you detach this piece. This entire section flips up. These pieces move further up like this. And then the waist sort of moves down like that. Make the legs straight. Take this inside tire section, move it down. Then you want to push this up, that will push out the head. Move these up and then move these out to the side and twist them around like this. Same on this side, move around. Then there's two little pegs here that will go into these holes. Just goes in like that. Come down to the legs. Now this transformation is pretty cool. You want to split them in half. These sections will spin around like this. Then this entire section will slide up. Twist around like this. Flatten out the foot. And twist it around. See that? It's a really nice transformation. It kind of just compacts the whole thing. I think it's really nice. So flip that around. Move that up. Slide it around. Flip that around. And turn it around like that. Then these back pieces will just split in half. To become a sort of... Yeah, this look thing. I don't really know how to explain it. Then you move the arm down, move it forward, and then this you want to pull out, twist it around, and push it back in, and that reveals the hand. You want to do the same on this side, so move it down, and then just twist this piece around and push it back in. There's Wheeljack in robot mode. It's quite nice. I really do like this design. I also like this sort of um, faux chest piece. It's like it's got this windscreen, which technically is the wing screen, but isn't actually the windscreen. And then there's these little green pieces, which aren't the green pieces that are on the roof. Those pieces are here. But, you know, it kind of looks like it. So it's kind of nice. And if you don't really know what faux means, faux means fake. So, for example, uh, a lot of the Masterpiece Beast Wars figures... Uh, for example, Cheetor and Dinobot, the chests are faux chests because those beast heads on their chests aren't actually their beast heads in beast mode. So yeah, the articulation, he's got a ball joint at the head, can move up and down. He's also got light piping as well, so his eyes light up. Uh, then the arms are on ball joints here. 
they can move all around in and out and there's a hinge here and a hinge here as you might be able to tell this piece flops about a lot it actually used to be incredibly tight and it was incredibly difficult to get out but now it it just comes out all the time then there's a ball joint at the wrist and also a hinge so you can get a, a decent amount of posability with this hand no whistle again the legs can move forward and back there's a swivel and there's a bend at the knee a fairly limited bend but still a bend you can also move this sharp piece out i guess if you wanted to uh, here he is next to optimus you know the sizing isn't isn't that bad i quite like it i think they look quite good together and that's about it for Bumblebee, uh, not Bumblebee, Wheeljack. As you can see, he's actually like a lot. He's actually shorter than RC, whereas in the show RC was like quite a bit shorter than Wheeljack. Anyway, moving on to Wolf Cybertron Optimus Prime. This guy's transformation is convoluted, not complicated, but convoluted. I had this figure for about ten years before I figured out how to transform it. Because like when I had it, I was incredibly young, you know. I I, I probably it was pro I think it was it was probably in vehicle mode, and my my dad probably turned it into robot mode, and I probably just never transformed it after that, just because of how convoluted it is. But I am glad that I I have it and I've figured it out now. So you want to grab this blue section, flip it over like that. Then this entire front section will come forward like this. Then these front sections over the wheels will detach and move up like that same on this side detach and move up then these side pieces here will hinge out then hinge again and then hinge up same on this side hinge up like this then I like to take these pieces and just move them back before I do anything else come to the bottom here Detach the back piece, then these pieces will untab here. There's a hole there and a peg there. These will clip to the back. Some people do this bit slightly differently, but you know, just, just to make it easier, I do this. Just fold that all the way down. You, you'll see what I mean in a minute. These, same on this side, back. Come to the back, take these pieces, fold them down. And then you want to detach the legs. Then these entire pieces will fold out. Then this will slide up like this. Fold down the foot. And then here you want to fold this piece back out. Fold the wheels around and then fold that back up again. So some people when transforming they'll just have it like down here like this. They'll move it around and fold it back up. But just to make it easier for me, like they'll have it like this. I, I just like to put it up against that. I don't think it really causes that much of a problem. So I just kind of keep it like that. Same on this side. Fold all of that around. Then you come to the back here. These pieces will fold down. The wheels will fold around. Then these entire pieces move up like this. Take this roof section and it will rotate around, twist around, and back around like that. Then you want to rotate this piece around. Then this will collapse in. I don't know if you can really see, but this piece will also push forward. Then this will go down and tab into place like that. Then these pieces just fold around like that. Move down the arms. Twist them around, flip out the fists, same on this side, flip out the fists, flip up the head, and then collapse that onto the back, just like that. There is Optimus Prime in his robot mode. So, um, articulation, he's got a ball joint at the head, he also has a little tiny bit of light piping as well. I might actually be able to... No, doesn't look like it. Can't show it off. Oh well. There's also this panel which moves up and down if you wanted to use that as articulation. 
the arms move around like that. They also do this. So I guess if you wanted to slump the arms down, you could do that, but I don't really see why you would want to. You can move out. If you move this panel up, they can move even further out. Uh, there is a swivel here and a bend here. The wrists are also on a swivel, which is nice. No waist swivel unless you detach this piece and then there's sort of like an upper body swivel, so you can kind of do that, but it just kind of looks off. It doesn't look right. Legs can move forward that much, but if you lift up this, they can move forward even further. And they can move back that much. They can move out this. Uh, these arms, they just keep flopping down. You can move out this much, unless you open that up, then they can move out like this. Then there is a swivel here, bend at the knee. There's also this bend as well, so it depends on which one you want to use as the knee, if you want to use either that one or that one. I think this one's probably better to use, because unfortunately this one's a lot easier to bend. And then there's also a ball joint at the foot, but it's incredibly tight and I'm afraid to do anything with it, in case it either breaks off or gets stuck. But you can sort of turn it, Ooh, and it kind of move up and down. There is a, a hinge where, uh, where that screw is so you can move it like that but I, I'm just so afraid to touch that ball joint I, I swear it's going to break and you can see the detailing on his chest it's kind of pointy which isn't normal for Optimus but I, I like it here you can see it's sort of got these window looking shapes, it's also got these detailing on the crotch and the tail lights go from looking like this to like this, which I think is quite nice. Got these grates on the shins. This guy's filled with loads of detail. Uh, and on his back, like his actual back, you can see there's also a, an Autobot symbol there. Because uh, in the game he had like this moving Autobot symbol on his back. So if you could detach this whole piece in robot mode, then you'd get a much more game accurate looking figure. But uh, I don't mind it. I think it looks alright. Now, you can sort of position these however you like. I think if there was a hinge to move them up, that... Oh, pardon me. That could look quite cool, but there isn't. So I just like to have them moving back. Gun. Uh, it can tap into his arm like this, or onto his back, or I guess the wheel. Uh, there is a little slot there that allows it to plug into the back like that. Of course, you can put it in his hand. Of course, it's limited because of you know it's broken. I I would have it folded out like this and in his hand like that, but of course it's limp. But hey, it it's whatever. Just fold it up, put it on his arm, I guess, like that. Here he is next to Optimus. You can see. The absolute size difference. You know, I quite like it. I, I do really like the idea of this being a Ryan Pax and he gets upgraded into this guy for Optimus Prime. Yep. So uh, that's about it, really, for these guys. This video is probably like, I don't know how long this video is because I haven't edited it yet. I haven't edited it yet. But it's probably like 30 minutes, maybe. Probably one of my longer videos. Probably not going to get that many views. Doubt there's anyone really watching at this point. Scorpion is not on screen at all. Oh well. Who really cares about robots in disguise anyway? <laughs> uh, I guess I'll just lie down there. But yeah, that's, uh, that's about it for this video. So I guess that's Salu BC out.